my job now is to introduce a video. And uh, in, to do that uh, as an introduction, it, it made me think of the uh, apocryphal, apocryphal description of, of how to decide whether a meeting or a talk is any good based on the eyes. So I for introduction. You know, today, did, were we inspired? We, I think we were absolutely inspired. Um, we learned a great deal about the current innovations, about the rapid pace of technology, about all the amazing opportunities before us. And with that comes a certain, I think, responsibility that we also have to accept because we, rep we are leaders and we represent the leaders in a system that's changing really, really rapidly. Uh, were we informed? Ditto that. Uh, we were incredibly well informed today and my eyes were opened in so many different ways, but particularly on the opportunities to knock down silos and particularly to think differently about the fact that we can't treat the entrepreneurs and the innovators and the biz dev and the clinical trialists and da da da, -da the regulators and the payers and the patients and the health systems as different because these problems cross all of those groups and in order to solve them we're going to have to all sit down together which leads really to the third I which is insight to riot. And did we do that today? Perhaps. We may have laid the groundwork to, to really force these questions in a way that we can deal with moving forward to make it better. But who are we making it better for? Are we making it better for large companies to make more money? Are we making it better for regulatories to ha regulators to have less paperwork? Are we making it better for, no, we're making it better for patients. And you know, we, we've talked today about the billions of people on the planet, about the trillions of dollars it costs to take care of everybody, but at the end of the day, it's, it's you, it's me. It's our kids, it's our parents, it's our ancestors, it's our aunts and uncles and cousins and neighbors. And, and those come down to the way, I, I'll, I'll close, with the way I like to think about these, these big, global, impactful, historic, changing opportunities that are at our fingertips. The world changes one person at a time, one patient at a time. And in the video that I'm teeing up, we're going to show you just a few examples of some stories that we've collected over the last four years uh, from the prior Constellation Forum meetings. In the blink of an eye, my life changed and I was paralyzed from the neck down. Heath will feel sensations in his arm and hand in the laboratory, but when he leaves and goes home, he's reporting that he can feel other sensations. So it's kind of cool when I pet the dog, or I like, I can feel the dog's hair. Given the technologies that are available to us today, there are very few limits. What you see, it'll sound like science fiction, but these are two ports into Keith's brain. There are five chips in his motor and sensory areas. But I didn't realize they were mapping my brain now. We've been working with Keith in the lab to uh, strengthen his arm and his abilities to move and pick things up. Technologies and operations that improve communication and connectivity improve health both within our system and across the globe. When the Russian invasion of Ukraine broke out, Ukrainian doctors were faced with severely limited resources. We were asked to take our COVID learnings and to develop a similar emergency telehealth response in Ukraine. So Dr. Roman, you are a, 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 a pediatric nephrologist? Yes. If I remember correct? Yes, yes. Uh, her name is Victoria and on August she will be 12 years old. We have uh, problems with the labor uh, function. In your opinion, what is better for this patient? Looking ahead, we believe that the frontiers of medicine require more collaboration in order to translate new science into better patient outcomes. I struggled with Crohn's disease for 16 years before I found the clinical trial that changed my life. I'm living proof of what happens in this amazing new field of bioelectronic medicine when everyone collaborates. My colleagues and I discovered that stimulating the vagus nerve stops inflammation. This has tremendously interesting and important implications for using vagus nerve stimulation to treat inflammatory conditions. I've certainly been a head scratcher for doctors all over the country as I think they looked at my chart like I was a walking episode of Unsolved Mysteries. 
And instead what I found was Dr. Tracy's uh, talk with the Huffington Post about rheumatoid arthritis and vagus nerve stimulation. We're very close to a time when millions of patients will receive benefit from vagus nerve stimulation for the treatment of diseases ranging from epilepsy and depression to inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. They told us Layla will probably take her last breaths during this weaning process. Why did this have to happen to our little girl? They explained that there was a new cutting edge treatment for children like Layla who had lost a significant amount of oxygen called newborn brain cooling. Layla is now 11 years old. She's a rising fifth grader this fall. Had there not been research that was done on brain cooling before this ordeal happened with Layla, this cutting edge treatment would not have been an option for us and things probably would have turned out very, very differently. He's now uh, able to pick up even a cup and take a drink uh, all by himself. I have a device in my chest and because of it, I no longer struggle with Crohn's disease. So I could not be more proud to introduce you to my special little miracle, my daughter, Layla Natalie. <laughs> Let's maintain our commitment, inspire others, and create a better future.